hello. Um, I am here to talk about uh, the uh, uh, farmers movement going on in India and how uh, the corporate has been influencing the government policy making. If one thing which has become clear from this movement to the people of India is that uh, our prime minister uh, personally and the government in general uh, is under uh, some kind of duress uh, because of the uh, private corporates, uh, mainly uh, two of them, uh, both of them are from Gujarat, the home state of Narendra Modi, uh, Ambani and Adani. And uh, this we can say for two reasons. Uh, first is uh, that uh, the Prime Minister went to inaugurate uh, the private hospital which has been started by Mr. Mukesh Ambani. And uh, if you see the picture of that day, uh, you, you realize who's patronizing whom. I mean, uh, the hand of Mukesh Ambani is on Mr. Narendra Modi's back. Uh, not, not vice versa, as, as you would expect. And, uh, and uh, Adani was just a state level um, entrepreneur uh, before uh, Mr. Modi became the prime minister. But now he's the second most uh, important uh, businessman in the country uh, after Mukesh Ambani. And he uh, gets most of the contracts uh, which the government gives out in India and including abroad. Uh, the most recent is uh, six airports in the country have been given to Adani uh, to manage. The airports themselves were built by the government, but they have been handed over to Adani uh, to manage the, uh, uh, their, their affairs. So uh, these things are becoming very apparent. The prime minister has appeared in an advertisement for Geo mobile phone, which has been started by Mr. Mukesh Ambani's company. Uh, the strategy that this company adopted was it allowed free calls for first six months, and it could do so because it was using the towers of the government uh, telecommunication company called the BSNL. Uh, so, using the towers of the government company, this private company was allowed to do its operations. And, uh, and it was able to entice people because of its uh, free plan for six months. But now uh, in the competition, uh, BSNL is, is uh, losing out and, and so are other private uh, operators. And uh, Geo Mobile is now, uh, has now captured the Indian market. Um, so uh, mm, this is one thing which has become clear to the farmers that the government is, is uh, making all the policies for the interest of, uh, of businessmen. If you look at the three laws, all three of them favor the private corporates and are against the interest of the farmers. Um, the government has also uh, been able to influence the media. Uh, some of it has been bought by, by Mr. Ambani. Uh, uh, in, fact, in fact, a lot of them. And, and then the government, because it gives advertisements to uh, the media houses, uh, which, is a, which is a major source of their income, uh, has almost stifled the voice of dissent. And as an example, <coughs> uh, the, everybody knows how the farmers movement is being painted as you know, a, a movement of miscreants. Uh, they have even been called called uh, terrorists and, and Khalistanis, which is uh, a secessionist uh, movement in India. Uh, but uh, uh, we also see that uh, uh, there are other movements which, which uh, do not get even a line of coverage in, in, in spite of them you know, being very important. Uh, the, the one movement which I can uh, mention is uh, you know, Hindu saints. Uh, sitting on fast to save river Ganga. Uh, four of them have already died. Three of them died while fasting. The fourth one was murdered by mining mafia. And as we talk, uh, there is a saint by the name of Swami Shivanan Saraswati sit sitting in Matri Sadhan Haridwar uh, to save Ganga. But the government is not listening to him and neither is media writing about uh, it. So there is complete capture of corporate uh, over the government policies, over the media, 
so much so that the voice of the movement, the voice of the dissent is not reflected. This is the sorry state of affairs of, of uh, uh, India. Now, uh, this, this government under Mr. Narain Modi has been very aggressive in its foreign policy. And, uh, you know, they have always labeled uh, Pakistan as a terrorist state. Uh, for his initial uh, period of prime ministership, Mr. Modi, uh, when he was visiting various countries in the world, was trying to get a consensus on, on um, this issue. Uh, he wanted the countries of the world to declare Pakistan a terrorist state. But a lot of these countries, um, including China, were not willing to do that. And the fact is that Pakistan is as much a victim of terrorism, probably more than India. It is true that it is source of a lot of terrorism, but it is also true that it pays a heavy price for it. Um, probably it doesn't know how to handle it. And, and uh, um, we saw how uh, Osama bin Laden was, was ultimately traced down to Pakistan and eventually killed by the US uh, security forces. Uh, so it is a haven for, for a lot of terrorists. But then uh, we don't know how much control Pakistan has over these, these uh, forces. Um, but it gives an excuse to countries <coughs> to build up their security apparatus uh, in the name of protecting uh, them from terrorism. And, uh, and occasionally there are um, you know, terrorist incidents uh, which justify the government's policy of investing more in arms, um, increasing the defense budget. Uh, so this is what we have been witnessing for the last, uh, uh, you know, uh, so many years, um, and especially, um, you know, during the BJP governments, because they are more belligerent towards, uh, especially Pakistan, um, and and. Uh, you know, um, you they have been they have entered uh, into uh, 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 an agreement to conduct joint military exercises uh, with Israel, <clears throat> with United States. Uh, they have been buying arms from all over the all over the world. Uh, and uh, had it not been for the Galwan incident, where uh, India paid a heavy price as twenty of its soldiers were killed. Uh, after um, a truce, which was in place for a long time, India and China had an agreement that they would not, their soldiers would not fire uh, on each other. Uh, but in spite of this, uh, China, uh, you know, advanced into the Indian territory. There was clash between the soldiers, and 20 Indian soldiers died. We don't know how many died on the Chinese side. There are no confirmed reports. Um, but uh, Mm, the uh, stalemate with China continued for a long time, and apparently now there is some kind of uh, of uh, truce um, where uh, the countries have decided to respect the the border, um, which is called the uh, line of actual control, uh, and and simultaneously um, a very surprising thing has happened is that India has also uh, called for truce, truce with Pakistan, and 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 for some time now, at least, uh, there is ceasefire with both Pakistan and and China. Uh, but the government has been using this issue of nationalism, and especially uh, militaristic nationalism, to to divert the attention of people from its neoliberal economic policies. Uh, if you look at the current Indian government's budget, it is almost like a like a uh, you know a sale list of assets that the government of India has. It wants to sell everything from banks to to airports to the the official Indian government airline um, to even even the uh, defense establishments like the ordnance factories. And and let me also mention at this point that Modi government. Uh, is also uh, 
the one which took initiative to open the defense sector and the insurance sector for private capital for the first time in India. And uh, everybody knows that they bought uh, Rafale um, jet aircraft from France, but at the same time, Mr. Modi was also influential in, in helping uh, his, uh, his uh, businessman colleague, uh, Mr. Anil Ambani, get a contract to manufacture Rafale jets. It's a different matter that uh, Mr. Ambani doesn't have any experience in making, uh, making aircrafts or, or any defense items. But uh, uh, these, uh, uh, this uh, emotional issue of uh, militaristic nationalism has been used by government of India to hide a number of things, to divert attention from a number of its anti-people policies. And one after another, they took a number of decisions, which included uh, demonetization, uh, imposition of uh, goods and services tax, uh, bifurcation of Jammu and Kashmir state into two union territories. The, the uh, status of the state was downgraded to union territories. And uh, the Citizenship Amendment Act and the National Register of Citizens, uh, which evoked uh, uh, protest from the general people, mainly Muslim women. And now the farmers uh, uh, are protesting against the three farm laws, which have been brought by this government. And the, for, for the first time, the Modi government is, is facing a challenge where uh, it, in spite of having used all tactics of trying to defame the movement, of trying to divert the attention, uh, trying to label it as, uh, as uh, violent. Um, and it is very funny that at the same time, they decided to glorify a very violent incident from the Indian history, that of uh, the Chori Chora where uh, people had burned a police station and 22 policemen were also burned along with it. Uh, they, they honored the people who participated in that event. But um, in spite of all the uh, tactics that the government has adopted to divert people's attention, um, it somehow is unable to uh, manage the farmers' movement. And we hope that uh, the farmers' movement uh, will succeed and eventually change the course of Indian policy making from pro corporate to pro people, and hopefully uh, our democracy will survive uh, because there was a looming danger uh, that the government will will uh, it had already started ignoring a number of things in the Indian constitution, and it appeared as if the con constitution did not mean anything for them, and and uh, it has. Um, uh, it has very little regard for, for democratic processes. For example, uh, the farm laws itself were pushed through the upper house of the parliament without any debate or without any voting, in spite of protests from the opposition MPs. So uh, we are at a very crucial juncture in our history where the people for once in six years uh, are in a position to, uh, to uh, tell the government that this is not how they will be allowed to run the country. Thank you. <clears throat>